I almost want to simplify and say the physicist should stay in their lane and stick to physics and like leave the rest of stuff to the artists and the athletes and the poets. And, you know, there is a lot of magic left in the universe. I just don't know that, I don't know why we expect physicists to be the ones to hand it to us on a platter. That, that's where things go off the rails for me. I mean, physics is the king of the intellectual castle for some reason that I can't totally comprehend. Mm. Like, we could have easily looked up at the stars and been like, hey, those stars aren't moving the way we thought they were. Maybe they're alive or something like that. Like, that wouldn't be an irrational thing to suggest if the biologists were in charge of the castle or something. But instead, the physicists are like, no, it's dark matter, you know, or something, right? And, and it's just, it's, it seems like a very arbitrary distinction. I can imagine a planet, you know, a thousand light years away where the biologists were in charge of astronomy instead. Um, or, you know, the physicists didn't make any claims about the cosmos or, you know, cosmological claims. Like, they didn't really talk about our human relationship to reality in any way or or, or really even talk about reality. They just talked about physical processes unfolding. Like, that would make a lot of sense to me. I think this is the first time I've disagreed with you. I Hell don't... Yeah. Let's do I, it. I don't agree with that. Um, I agree that you can imagine it. And I agree that... Um, uh, it would be it would be fun to imagine, right? Like you could um, you could like write cool stories about that. But I think there are real, genuine reasons that physics um, is in the place that it is, and that people wind up um, looking to physics as some sort of authority more than biology, as it were, right? And it's not that hard to search. It's just the fact that physics is universal. Like it's so. Um, um, the the two methods of physics do work for stars, and they also work for chemistry. Um, and to not a only point. that, yeah, yeah, I know. To a I point, mean, you know, everything's to a point. But it's like you you can't apply the concepts of biology to stars. Like if you try that, you wouldn't understand stars. And um, the but well, the stars don't move the way they're supposed to. I mean, that's that's for sure. Like yeah, the galactic I, rotation problem or something, right? Yeah, it's like. But then, but the other thing I was going to say is like, if like physics also talks about small stuff, right? Like really, really, really small. Like there's, there's, there's no boundary to its, to its like scale. It talks about all the, the smallest stuff and the biggest stuff, everything. And in particular, if you talk about the small stuff that everything else is made out of, then you have some sort of claim to like fundamental understanding. Right. Fundamental physical understanding for sure, but I mean, you're not going to find the love particle between me and my wife or something, right? Like, there, there's certain phenomena that require different levels of abstraction in order yeah. to grok. Yeah. So, but you also can't imagine uh, love occurring at a particle level. Like, we sometimes use that language to say that it's some a big part of the universe, though, right? It is a big part of the universe, but so this I think relates to what we were talking about yesterday. I remember when I was like, "Hey, I think I figured out why you why analytic idealism doesn't make any goddamn sense <laughs> to kick the idealists again." Where um, uh, we have this vision of emergence as being something big that comes out of many small things interacting and producing a novel phenomenon, but we never have a system where a really big thing suddenly like interacts with itself to produce the smaller things that m make it like that doesn't make sense like that's not the arrow of time that's not the that's not necessarily the direction of evolution by the time that it gets to the smaller things it's dissipated it's collapsed the emergence no longer is there so you can't have emergence if you're going down you can only have it as you're building smaller things up into the big thing and so if you're trying to understand something like love, which is at a much higher abstraction level than the atoms that are involved in it, you still are left with the question of like, okay, well, what is the arrangement of atoms that produces love? And so even if the stars are alive, you're still stuck with this material question of like, okay, well, how are the atoms inside of them interacting to produce the aliveness that we can detect? And so it, it seems to be the, the grounds 
from which everything else springs. It's the like Cartesian tree. Look, all I'm saying is all I'm saying <laughs> is that even if we all sit down today and nail a material model for the actions of the medium that results in all of the equations that we love and hate from quantum mechanics, even if we have that, we still should probably leave love to the poets and the musicians and the 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 novelists and any literally anybody else like there's there's oh. pieces of the universe that are important that that physics just isn't the right toolkit for yeah. that i completely agree with i think the only thing i was pushing back on is you basically saying why are physicists given this like special role we could have given that to anybody and that i think is the wrong thing but i totally agree with you that like i don't think anyone is going to argue that there's like you can find the differential equation. Imagine there was a theory of everything and it was one differential equation. Oh, now we understand love. Like, no, it's not it. That's not at all what physics is trying to do anyway. Mm. So there, yeah, that's, I guess that's the point is there are important parts of the universe that aren't really questions for physics, but I think we expect physicists to have answers to everything. And that's where things get a little off the rails. So I think that there might've been something that happens with biology declaring itself to be a materialist discipline that meant that that like spiritual instinct had to go somewhere and for whatever reason physicists were more permissive to it because i think that if if like if you've ever seen a creature that goes from being alive to being dead it is impossible to not just spiral on the fact that it is the exact same stuff in roughly the same confirmation as it was moments ago, and now it is no longer. And there is something insane that has happened that science has absolutely like no word for. And biology very firmly was like, there's no such thing as a soul, it's just atoms. And so we're like, okay, well, there, I mean, clearly there's something. And so if people are like, well, reality cannot be understood and it's it's weird and mystical and biology is quantum then perhaps it's these like quantum superpositions that are maintained which cre create the illusion of soul and we're kind of happy to put it there because it's like we don't go there anyways yeah there's the the the, the mysticism that has kind of coagulated in physics is definitely a very interesting cultural phenomenon that has happened and there are there's more things that didn't make it into the book that i was that are interesting in this context that i was like thinking of that i kind of wanted to talk about and um one of them well first of all there's this book how the hippies saved physics which is um all about the counterculture and <clears throat> like a bunch of kind of fringe physicists in the in the 60s um, working on Bell's theorem and the strangeness of quantum physics um, as directly kind of re like the, like directly tied into counterculture and like the free love movement and and like you know altered states of consciousness and all this kind of stuff. So the dancing wooly masters and the Tao of physics, both of these books came out of people from that group. And those two books set the tone for physics in like the popular imagination. And it's still like reverberating, right? So there's definitely that part, like those, those things, like that's like straight up mysticism basically, right? And they were attracted to that and they, they, were, they were working on it and they were trying to understand how the quantum you know, world, what it was saying about like deep aspects of reality and stuff. The other thing that I think is is cool and interesting is that um, the the whole like Copenhagen kind of orthodoxy very like and it was it wasn't just Copenhagen it was like also the von Neumann von Neumann Wagner interpretation which was like your mind consciousness collapses the wave function right that is just like candy for like, you know, the mystical <laughs> worldview, right? Um, all of these things, they, 
they they just like were a perfect recipe for um like the profligation of of um mystical concepts and and um and i don't i don't know exactly the causal directions and i don't know i don't think that i can very fruitfully speculate on like the instincts of mind that led people to this or if like spiritualism needed to go somewhere or whatever but the thing that seems at least historically accurate to me is that it was it was like a favor right it was like it was perfect it was a perfect setup for the people who thought in this way and um and they they used it like quite a lot 